endurance season and there are no more endurance parties for me to go to I thought because I'm a massive nerd I'd have a look how much competing has cost me this year um, obviously if I, I do at the end of every year I do add up how much horses in general cost me every year but I've never added up what just competing like the addition of competition costs um, so I'm not going to include things that I would have to pay for anyway so that's livery, feed, um, some of the farrier costs, physio, vaccinations, um, like just the stuff that you would have to pay for just by owning a horse, so um, insurance and, and all of that just. So I'm not going to include like the day-to-day -day costs of having a horse. What I am going to do is add up all of those extra additions um, that competing has given us. Um, so I thought I would just bring you along. I'm just gonna get Estrid ready for a ride. And as we do that, have a little chat about what my 2024 endurance season has cost. Do I want to know? Maybe not. <laughs> but we do need to know for future budgeting. Hello, ponies. Right, Wizzle, this is for you, Estrid. We're gonna go do some work. Hello. So first up, January this year, my first endurance competition expense was my Endurance GB membership, which is the governing body for endurance riding in the UK. Um, that was £77, and that is a full adult membership for a year. It gives you public liability, third li it gives you some sort of insurance for public stuff. Um, and like riding insurance, not just for competitions, like day-to-day 24-7 -day cover, and obviously gives you membership rates for entering rides, because you can get day membership, um, but obviously that costs more. And also it gives you the quarterly Endurance GB magazine and like access to all of the sections of the website and things. So every year in January, that is usually my first endurance competition related cost. Where are you going? So once I was a member of EGB, I could then obviously enter rides, that's the whole point. Um, and my ride entries this year cost £446 altogether. Um, that, does in, does in, uh, that does include um, four graded endurance rides. One of which I didn't get to go to because Estrid had her roly-poly at the start of the season. But if you withdraw after the, um, the closing date for your ride entry, then you don't get that back unless you have a veterinary, physio or like doctor letter, um, which I didn't get in time. So we didn't get that money back. So the rest were all pleasure rides. I think we did three pleasure rides and two social training rides. So not compared to like say British eventing, show jumping, dressage, or almost any other entry fee um, sport, 446 I think it was pounds, isn't that bad for a season. But also I don't do that many competitions. So um, obviously if you do more, it will cost more. But that's, that is what I have spent this year on my entry fees and also two of those entry fees included corralling and camping in them so that is included when you pay um, for an entry on EGB and the venue has camping and corralling the camping and corralling will be added on to your entry fee um, which is quite handy really so it's not didn't have to work it out as an additional expense in addition to entry fees, I shoe my horses most of the year anyway. They do have a period of going barefoot in the winter. Um, but I'm not going to add like normal shoeing onto this, but Estrid has pads and pins, which she doesn't have now in, for competition. And that has cost me an extra £200 this year to compete. Um, and she only had them in for three, well, all three of her events, but for three shoeing cycles. 
So next up is training fees. Um, I paid for one subscription, that was £85, and that was to go unlimited access to Poplar's farm, which isn't far from me. But in total, I spent £178 on going out and about to different places, getting Astrid some experience, um, and kind of just, you know, different places, because the training from here isn't that good. Um, I think I ended up going to like external training, so training that actually cost me money rather than just driving to places that would be free for a hack. I think I ended up doing like five different sessions. The cheapest was £12, and um, the most expensive I think was like 25 and it's definitely something to factor in because I wouldn't be paying to use those facilities if I didn't have to train to compete, though I would go and do other experiences, I guess, if I just had horses, but I am factoring that in because it is part of it. So what goes hand in hand with entry fees and going to training venues is being able to get there. So I don't include kind of my transport expenses in terms of upkeep and insurance because I would have them anyway if I didn't compete. But what I do include is going to all the competitions and the training events. And this year I spent 802 pounds on fuel which is by far my biggest expense of competing. And you've also got to factor in, not only do I have to get to training and get to events, but I also have to pay for fuel for the crew car to meet me um, out on course. Something that goes hand in hand with having to pay for fuel to go in the crew car is also you need food for the crew. Food for the crew, food for me on competition. I don't add Estrid's feed and haylage in there because although yes I do feed her more because she's competing um, and she's got a higher workload, I would still be feeding her. So I'm, I'm for now, maybe next year, I'm not gonna work out how much more feed I buy because I compete. Um, but it cost me a hundred pounds um, over the three competitions where I've had crew for crew food and my food for in the vet gate and stuff, which seems like a, like a small amount for a whole year, but that's only three competitions. And all these little things, they soon add up. Last, but certainly not least, is the fact that I go to competitions means that I get competition photos. And no matter how many times I tell myself I have enough photos of my horses, I always get tempted to get them. And I love supporting like the small business of the ride photographers as well. Um, so I do almost always get the photos. Um, and I've spent 91 pounds on photos this year and I deem that a, every penny well spent, hey? Because you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Well done for standing still. Do you want another one? Seeing as we're standing so nicely with so much chaos going up in the yard. Good girl. Good girl. So in total, the addition of all those extra bits and bobs that aren't part of my normal horse care cost me £1,900. Um, I'm going to work out my budgeting and stuff for next year, probably in January, but it's definitely worth paying attention to that those costs that I put for the day-to-day -day care of my horses and how much they cost monthly in general, I haven't factored in all those additional competition costs maybe as carefully as I should so two thousand pounds is not a bad price to pay for a year of fun and doing what I love with my horse that is for sure and I would happily spend every penny again I've had such a wonderful year um, and I think in comparison to a lot of people's years and competition fees and everything like that it is relatively inexpensive endurance as a whole um, but yes definitely eye-opening not quite as much as I thought it would be but obviously as I up the distances next year that is going to go up and stabling fees and things will go up as well so yeah I better get earning some more money then eh Astrid so we can go out and about